Hi guys! For those of you who hasn't seen the previous versions, I just want to show what I'm trying to build. If the tiniest LED cube, it will only be 2 cm square, that's less than an inch square. And I just want to show you how far I've gotten. Well, I just happened to look up at my ceiling and noticed the projection that by accident done by my workbench lamp. It's not tiny yet. It's still on a breadboard with all sorts of wires, but it's actually working. And I got one more pillar to do. One back there is missing. And if you're interested, you're welcome to stay and watch me solder the very last pillar of this cube. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. So this is where all soldering has been going on. Oh, you can see my uh, rig, homemade rig right there, where I just have a tripod holding this one piece of aluminum and holding a cell phone camera holder I got from eBay. And that's how I tape all my YouTube videos. No fancy equipment, just a cell phone. Like I said before, the important thing about soldering tiny things like this is just to have the right equipment. A temperature controlled soldering iron with a very, very fine tip. Flux pan is the magic thing right here. Put this on whatever you want to solder. I guarantee the solder will stick to it. So as you've seen, we are dealing with very, very small things here. And let me show you some of my previous failed attempts. This is using a 22 gauge hookup wire that normally we would use for breadboards. And they're just way too big. I mean, if you put another LED down there, it'll be completely covered up when you're trying to see it from the side here. So that's out. But before I made even a jig for the small one, I made a full size, I actually, it's like life size. No, it's not life size. It's, I don't know how many more times bigger, you know, one of these compared to one of these, maybe about 10 times bigger. So this is like a 10 X size jig. This was my plan is to have just a piece of cardboard like this. Very, very thin piece of cardboard from uh, just, uh, I think it's like chicken and biscuit. Laser cut the little notches and then hold the LEDs. But as you can see, it's not holding it very well at all. I mean, if I have it, I can maybe use it once or twice and then it start getting wobbly like that. It just doesn't hold its shape anymore. Let me show you some of my other attempts. <laughs> Let's see, these are all pretty much similar. I make like three or four at, a, at the same time. Uh, these little holes, by the way, was my plan was to put the actual wire through there and hold it while I wire it up. But it turned out that it's not really necessary to do that. These little square ones here is basically to figure out how big of a hole for my final jig, which is right here. These holes are only 2.7 millimeter by 3.2 millimeters. One of the things I have to do to make the pillars is they cannot be completely symmetrical from one layer to the next. They have to actually be rotated. But since this is not square, the holes actually have to change dimension. This one is wider, thinner, wider, thinner. So the next problem is, well, before I was able to make the notches deeper or shallower, now I actually have to make it deeper or shallower in that dimension. Three of these cardboard pieces is exactly what I need to uh, have it kind of like stand up and hold it in there. Basically the ones that are horizontal like this at just the right depth because it's not as deep over here. So that's, that hole is just right to hold it about halfway so I could solder this side. And on the one that are kind of like standing up, I make them deeper by making it go through three layers of cardboard. And that worked really well. It's easier to put the flux before we put it into the jig. So let's do that. Just a little bit, that's all it takes. Uh oh. <laughs> I found it. Alright. So we need to make sure that the orientation of the rotation is perfect here. So the topmost has the triangle on the left side. Here's this triangle notch here. That is my guide to uh, figure out how it should be rotated. I have these four holes and I thought I could do them four at a time. But it's just too hard. It's too close to each other. So I've been doing it one at a time. So I'm just going to pick one of the holes. So that goes horizontal like that. 
and then next one should go vertical with this notch facing towards me. So I'll do that. So this is kind of like that thinner wall here. So this hole is not as wide as the top one. It's pretty snug. So this is not going to fall out or anything. It's very snug. So let's double check. So that one should have the notch on that side. Yep. The notch on this side. Yep. The notch on the right side. Yes. And the notch on the inside. Yep. So that's first layer. Second layer is exactly the same. And so it will go in there exactly the same. But now the one that are vertical, that second and third one will go a little deeper. As you can see they are sticking out and that will be taken care of by this last layer which will make the depth perfect. So I just press it down as deep as it will go. Make sure they are lined up, not tilted this way, not crooked. And as you can see there, it is now flush with the third layer for the one that are kind of slack standing up. And we are ready to solder. Clip it on. So nothing would move. I usually do it two at a time because we can only do this side. We can't do the inside. We'll take two wires. I use this 0 0.32 diameter 60-40 resin. It's really tiny and it works really well. I steady my hand on the third end here. And then just apply a little bit of solder. Doesn't take much. And tilt it a little bit. Okay. That's all the solder we need. And I have given up trying to make it tidy. I concentrate on getting things lined up, right distance, nothing is crooked, and I don't worry at all about getting the wire perfectly straight because it really has to bend due to the uh, asymmetry of the LEDs. So I can't just make them all perfectly straight because it won't go. You know, these two are thinner and that's wider. So basically what I try to do is just at approximate where it's going to go. So let's start with this one. Doesn't matter which way. Try not to pull it too much because you don't want to crook it. Keep continue. Make sure that it's actually still straight on all sides. Fingers are much too big to manipulate these wires. Okay. One wire. Okay. Things are still straight, I hope. Now we carefully take it out because I can't solder on the other side. As you can see, those are the only two things that go through. So carefully remove them. Poke the ones that are standing. Because they are stick currently sticking out. And once they become flat, I could take one of the layers out. Did I mention patience is required for this project? <laughs> okay, now we carefully again push it out because if we hurry, they're going to be crooked. Actually, usually they end up crooked anyway, so I don't know why I'm so careful. And then I have to fix it after I get out. See, I got this crooked already. See, that's crooked. So we have to fix that. OK. 
Okay. So the distance should be fine, but now they are basically could be tilted like this one because I push them out at the wrong angle. We need to kind of fix them up. Once we got all four of them in here, they become stronger. Just curious show that you really pay attention to the straightness in both direction. It's not my best pillar, but I think it's okay. Let's test it out. Let's plug it in. Well, here we are. It's beautiful. All 16 pillars, soldered up, all 64 SMD LEDs working. And now it's just a matter of putting it on a PCB. Well, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.